so many people in so many different ways. Um, I have my dog coming on set right now. She and I were snuggling last night. We, can we wait till later, please? We can she, snuggle later. Okay? She, she's a serious dog. <laughs> um, one, there's been so many major headlines and so many people that have really started stepping up and saying like, I don't like this. I'm not going to stand for this. I'm not going to, I don't feel good about, you know, what's been happening. Um, a lot of people don't know my whole life I've had to deal with so many different challenges. I've had to deal with a lot of inequality. I've had to deal with racism. And honestly, sadly, it has become, unfortunately, somewhat of a norm for people that have my skin color. And it is really unfortunate, but um, it's something I think that systematically we just have to ultimately deal with. And um, I shouldn't have let it become a norm, you know, it was just, you know, but it was just, I personally am very God-fearing and I believe in the Bible and I believe that there's one way that we can have peace and security and it's through God. Um, and um, so I've always taken solace in that, but it's sad that someone on my level has had to accept being paid less, accept um, so many different things because of color of my skin. Um, so, in addition to everything that's been happening these past um, few weeks, couple of weeks now, um, we had news yesterday that broke the internet and also news that um, was just trending on every social media site and that was the news of my husband that <laughs> who decided to make a stand and um, to make some big news. So. Um, he recently has stepped down from the Reddit board and that was something that was, I think, shocking to everyone, definitely shocking to me. Um, but I would like to ask, invite Alexis to Serena Saturday and um, ask why did you feel the need to step down from the board? Well, uh, first, thank you for having me. Uh, lots of <laughs> lots of folks from really amazing news organizations reached out, and I had to tell all of them that I was uh, spoken for. That I had these. <laughs> you were getting the exclusive. Um, look, I, uh, you know, because this is something we talked about a lot um, over the years, but then especially now in the last uh, really week or so. Um, like this, this was not an easy decision at all. Uh, Reddit's a company that I started right out of college. Um, spent a lot of my formative years working on countless hours building with the hope of creating a, a really special platform for community online. And, you know, I take that board responsibility very seriously. Uh, and, and upon reflecting on the state of of where our country is right now, um, I thought about what I could do beyond uh, a social media post, beyond uh, a donation, um, but really lead, um, and in a way, maybe counterintuitively, lead by stepping down from the board position of a major tech company um, to make way for like I, like I asked a, a black candidate, um, because we need diversity at the highest levels of business now more than ever. And I say that because it will be in the best interests of Reddit, the company, for that to happen. It's the best interests of every company for that to happen. And we're talking about so many things now and we're starting to see slowly some progress around change in our um, in, in very different various systems of our, of our government, of our justice system, um, but business should be no exception. I think the tech industry is long overdue for that. And, uh, you know, we talked about it at length, mm -hmm. and, and I really appreciated all of the counsel and advice and understanding that you showed me, because this, you know, you knew this was not an easy decision. Um, but then once I realized why, uh, why I needed to do it, it became very easy. Did you think um, stepping down from the board would be such big news? Or you didn't really? 
You didn't really uh, think about it. I know I, I, I did. I, I was surprised. I was floored um, to get so many notes, whether it was from current employees, past employees, random people, you know, just, just across the board, so many just, just strangers, even business leaders, all saying the same thing. Um, to see the response was shocking. I mean, frankly, just when I start feeling uh, a little cocky about my career as, a, as now a venture capitalist, but, but as a business person, you know, I'm still, re <laughs> I'm still reminded who I have the privilege of being married to. And, and so in many ways, I... Which I was, is me. Yes, <laughs> that was my wife, for those of you who maybe don't know. Um, and I, I, it puts in perspective the work that I do, uh, which I take great pride in, um, but that I know still doesn't reach or affect as many people as you have and will continue to do. Continue to do. And part of that is, is all the things that you represent and all the things that you have done and overcome. And, um, and it makes me very proud and also humble uh, to think, yeah, I, I, I was shocked by the surprise. It was actually, it was literally the first time in my life I or Reddit were ever trending on Twitter. And um, I know that seems like a random accolade, but as, as, as Jack is my witness, I thought that was pretty Who's special. Jack? Jack Dorsey. Like, oh. I've never oh. seen, uh, Do you think... I've never seen that happen before. And I've seen, I've seen Serena Williams trend a few times. Not always for the best reasons. Usually not for the best reasons. Um, do you think that this will force people in the VC world to make changes? Mm. Um, I, I hope so. I think let's, let's look at all of business too, not even just VC or not even just tech, but all of business. But VC in particular, because yeah. the disparity, the, well, you know, it's as from as a VC that is not many people of color or women that are getting funding for businesses. That's right. So, do you think that that world in particular to start? Because you know, I'm always about start small and then grow, 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 grow. But mm -hmm. that's just my my method. But I was wondering, do you think that this particular business needs to take a stand? I think it will be in the best business interests of every industry, including and especially venture capital and tech, to do this because I, a part of my job is, is seeing these, these trends emerge and I really, I, I, I really believe, we, we all know this change is overdue uh, and I really believe that it is coming and it will continue, the drumbeat will get louder and as people, regular people realize how much influence they have I mean, the, whether it's a private company or a public company, the amount of impact you can have on it just by calling, just by uh, emailing, whether it's, you know, it, like all, all parts of their business have to respond to the market. And if the market is saying you need to change, they actually will. So you see the tech world and the VC world um, differently or together? I think, well, okay, so VC definitely has a higher, well, okay. Tech, tech is still wrestling with and will still need to keep, and this is where we need everyone to hold all of us accountable, myself included. Um, I think tech is just starting to realize the responsibility it has in our country, in our society. When we look, just from a business standpoint, at the market cap of the largest tech companies in the United States, it's, it's massive. Um, that dollar amount translates in influence. And so in the same way we think of holding our politicians accountable, we should be thinking about holding our mega corporations accountable. And where venture plays a role in this is when you know, that is the mechanism through which these companies get funded. And like you said, women and people of color, um, specifically blacks and Latinos, are woefully underfunded. As Especially black. <laughs> well, and Latinos too. It's, it's shocking. And I actually have a company, it's called Serena Ventures, and we, the reason I started Serena Ventures was because I literally didn't see anyone that looked like me in this world. And then I read this article that it said, at that point, when I started um, a few years ago, it said that less than 2% of VC money was actually going to help women. And I thought, whoa, that's crazy. You mean to tell me 98% is going to uh, men, you know, white men. And I'm thinking this is banana. So I knew that I didn't have the funding to 
to help. But I knew that there's so many people out there, so many companies that um, are able to, you know, just have a better opportunity if they had someone that can use their platform and use their voice. So that's kind of how we started. But you have initialized, which is an huge, huge VC company. Do you, do you guys, how are you guys making that move to support, to support us? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the conversation started probably last week at a new level um, around the venture community um, because this is something that I think rarely venture firms talk about, which is the distribution of their funding to founders of color, even breaking down those statistics. And although we still have a lot of work to do, our numbers are still, it's less than 10% of investors in our last fund uh, were, were, or sorry, less than 10%, I think it was 7% of founders in our last fund were black. Um, you know, for a population that's like 12, 13, 14% of the country, give or take, like that's terrible, that needs to be better. Um, so while I was not proud of the numbers, uh, because even though they were good relative to our peers, it's still not nearly good enough, I was proud of the fact that I think we're still one of the few firms that does publicly publish it, and I hope it does force other top tier firms to, to think about doing that, if not like actually doing it. Because ultimately, amazing founders are going to come from all over this country, all over this world, frankly, and they're not all gonna fit the mold of, of the folks who have gotten found, funded who tend to look like me, right? Who are, if you, if you think of all the titans of tech thus far, they're predominantly, they're overwhelmingly male, they're overwhelmingly white, um, and, and that's, that's because of the broken system. Um, and I think, and this is where I just, I cannot stress enough, the strength of numbers of people, like whether they're, they're on social media um, or wherever they are, actually makes an impact by holding leaders to account. And that's me too. Like we, we welcome the fact that we took criticism for not having a higher percentage of black founders in our uh, current fund, right? We, we are not happy about it. We're disappointed with it. You seem we'll really conversation. You seem really comfortable with uncomfortable topics and situations. <laughs> That's because I'm. Because it's not easy to to look at yourself and look at your company and say we could do better. Yeah. Um, That's the life of, you know, a, a world class athlete. <laughs> <laughs> to say we could do better, I could do better, but that's very, it's very interesting for you to publicly, not just here on Serena Saturday, but mm -hmm. to publicly talk about um, how you as a company can improve. I, I hope, um, I will look part of it's because I have the privilege of being married to you. Like these, these conversations are, these are, I mean, these are conversations that come up often, right? In one yeah. form or another because I, as I'm always man, on you, like, okay, yeah. who did you invest in? Did you dig yeah. it? <laughs> or, or, even, or even things that are in that moment to me innocuous and harmless, you, you and I appreciate will, will check me on and never in a disrespectful way. And, and always, you know, when we are having our like couple time, right? Like, you'll say, hey, did you notice earlier today, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is important, especially now more than ever, for, for all of us in white America, especially white men, to get comfortable with that pain. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of us- we're comfortable with it. Clearly. We're too comfortable with it. And clearly. It's uncomfortable, but we've gotten used to being uncomfortable. Yeah, and I, I, I welcome the discomfort, and when I talk about this, and I'll, I'll... And it's not right. We shouldn't be used to being out. No. What I'm, I'm saying, it's just, it's just been this way for over 400 years. So. Yeah, I, I really, there have been so many moments where I've even seen things that you've had to deal with, like total just bullshit, that you've had to deal with publicly with, with just grace and dignity, and... And I cannot think of, I, like I'm, I scramble my brain try to, trying to think of one time in my life where I walked into a room, a boardroom, full of billionaires and didn't feel totally, like, totally welcome there. Like at no point in my career did I ever feel like I ever had, 
like I was ever in the wrong room or that I was ever getting judged for anything. And that is such an incredible privilege to be able to walk through life knowing that I never had to prove myself in a room ever. And, and then to see the things you have to deal with would infuriate me. I wouldn't laugh, like it, it's, it's infuriating. And so when I ask my fellow white men, especially the rich ones, like, come on guys, we have a duty to lean in to that discomfort. And, and it's, yeah, they're uncomfortable conversations, but they're long overdue. And, and it's not, I think, I think there are a lot of us who were raised to think, don't be racist, which, which was the right advice, I think, but delivered in the wrong way. And it was that book um, that, that you know, recommended, um, White Fragility, that just it framed it so perfectly for me because we were all taught don't be racist. And we thought, okay, the last thing we want to do is be racist. That's, we don't want to do that. But it created this binary situation where you're either racist or you're not. When in reality, it's, it is this, this spectrum that we all, that, that I live on, right? I am racist because of a system that I inherited, that I didn't do anything to deserve, that, that I am now a part of and complicit in, just by virtue of how I was born, where I was born, when I was born. And, and accepting that means, that's the first step, realizing, okay, I'm, I am comfortable knowing this painful thing but it's the first step to knowing, all right, let me lean into that and figure out how to be a little, let, let me honestly figure out how to be a little less racist every day until ideally I can be almost, you know, as, as anti-racist as one could be. But I don't think, I think you, I will spend the rest of my life just trying to, to walk in that direction. And I think it's incumbent on us to accept that and look for that feedback and lean into that pain. Because when you tell me this stuff, it's still like my spidey sense tingles. Cause I still remember my entire childhood being told by well-intentioned, loving parents to just not be racist, period. And so the thought in, I think, a generation's heads was as long as you're not doing the, the awful, violent, you're not burning crosses and you're not right, then, then you're fine. When that's the wrong actual message. And, and so I welcome it in the same way that when, and for my fellow uh, 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 gym goers, like when you're pushing that new weight you feel a pain because your muscles are tearing. And that pain is actually growth. And so you actually welcome that. And I think in the exact you know same way, muscles tearing? <laughs> when, you, when you welcome that, you actually realize when those moments happen and you try to frame it in that moment and think, okay, this is growth. This is, mm -hmm. let me not get defensive. These are literally the words in my head. Alexis, don't get defensive right now because this is your turn to listen and better understand, and it's easy because you are my wife, and right, I am aligned with you. We are uh, equally yoked. Well, it's different because I'm black, you're white. I'm always telling you that <laughs> you're... <laughs> you are letting me know when I'm doing things that are uh, racist or sexist. Yeah, yeah, and that's great. So that's I'm important. always letting you know what what I see because I see things different. My whole life, I've been taught to see things different mm -hmm. because of who I am and because of the color of my skin. You see things different because of who you are and the color of your skin. And so right. I'm just telling you, like, my view. And then when you get to see it from my point of view, it's just totally different. Yeah. And you're right. There's been so many situations that I've been in that, you know, I just have to take the high road, even to this day. And um, I, I just feel like, personally, it's no better time to be the color that I am. It's no better time to be black. I'm mm -hmm. proud. I've always been proud to be who I am to be black and um, I, I just feel like I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be as strong as I am. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to be as amazing as I have been so far in my career. I wouldn't be me if I wasn't black. And so mm -hmm. I, I've always leaned into that and I've always just, I get that from my parents, you know, mm -hmm. they just really taught me the power of loving yourself and um, it is, it is really now more than ever a great time to love yourself and a great time to support yourself. But at the same time, like I said from the beginning, I feel like um, I just believe that I believe, you know, I believe in the Bible and mm -hmm. that there's only one, one, there's only God that can fix the system. But getting back to Reddit, why was it important for you to ask for a black candidate to fill your seat? Uh, well, 
So there were there were definitely some misinformed people on the internet who thought they knew how boards worked, but it, it's different from uh, hiring an employee, like a board, a director. Um, you know, it's it is important that that board role. Um, you know, in this case, it's one out of five uh, board seats. Uh, you know, comes with a vote. That one vote, um, you know, equal to the other board members in, in nearly all cases. Um, but that one vote is a chance to stand up for customers who aren't in that room, to stand up for investors who aren't in that room, to stand up for all the stakeholders. And you know, while that does not actually connect to day-to-day -day operations of a company, the CEO still at the end of the day actually runs the company, mm -hmm. um, they are accountable to the board. And, and so if there are things about companies that you all really like, um, the board ends up being a really great leverage uh, point to, to, to have change. Um, and if there are things about the company you don't like, uh, that, that board is a great leverage point to have things that you can change. And, and so regardless, when I thought about what Reddit, what the tech industry, what business needed now more than ever, was someone who had a position of power, um, you know, relatively speaking, um, to be able to say, you know what, there are too many white faces around the table. There have been for too long, and how I'm long not, is too long? I mean, I you know I've been. I mean, I founded Reddit 15 years ago. I've basically been on the board for for quite some time now. Um, I don't know, 2013, 14. Um, but but this is look. I had to look inward and really say, what are the things I can do beyond the donation, beyond anything else? But this isn't about red in particular. No, this no, is this about is taking a stand on such a big company, being a board member, being a co-founder of a, such a big company, yeah. and saying, I feel this way, yeah. and I'm making this statement. I have a you have a black daughter, so this yeah. probably meant more to you than, and it touches home more to you than, you know, other people can, can realize. Um, and so it, it's really not about just one company. Right. It's just about you taking a stand and you saying like, all companies need to step up. This isn't just about you with your relationship with Reddit. 100%, and there are other boards uh, that admittedly I'm still on, um, but you know, Reddit's a company that has five, 600 employees, um, obviously massive user base. And, and it has a big impact. And, and it's one that I've been associated with for so many years because I co-founded it, like you said. And I, you know, I've been so heartened by messages that I've received from total strangers in business. And, and in particular, a number of, of black men and women who found my email or through a friend sent me a note saying how much they appreciated the gesture simply because of all the rooms, all the boardrooms, all the executive rooms that they had walked into where they realized they had to prove themselves not only even more, um, but also then feel like they had the responsibility of advocating for all the other people who weren't in that room and who never even get the chance. Um, and I think, I really meant it when I said that I think resignation can be an act of leadership and I, I, I know this, puts Reddit in the best position possible. And I think if every company took a look around their boardrooms on Monday and really had the honest, hard conversation and said, are we doing the best by our customers and by our team and by our shareholders with this board makeup, um, I think we'd see even more change. That is very deep. And that brings me to my next question. Mm -hmm. You also announced that you're gonna donate future gains on your stock Mm -hmm. to serve the black community mm -hmm. and to curb hate, racial hate, starting mm -hmm. with a one million dollar pledge mm -hmm. um, to Colin Kaepernick's Know Your Rights campaign. So what led you to that decision? And I know we talked about it a little bit and I remember telling you this is your decision to make. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, whatever you do, I'm going to support you. Yeah. Um, this is not my decision to make. This is up to you. So this is all Alexis. Um, so which is really cool. A lot of people might think that I told you to do something mm. or I, to I forced you, <laughs> like I was in your ear. I, I, like, I'm sure you sometimes you heard wish <laughs> I weren't so stubborn, but. He doesn't listen to me ever, ever. so. Yeah. That, <laughs> well, that's not the case. Uh, um, so <laughs> what brought you to that decision? Um, I, 
so well, well, Cap in particular, I mean, he, we, I, you know, I've, I've gotten to know him, we've, we've gotten to know him. Um, I think even early in his protest, I felt he's clearly on to something. There's clearly an importance in that message. Um, and, and then when it turned out he was losing his job and then being blackballed, blackballed by the league, it, it was really, really disappointing. As a lifelong NFL fan, like diehard NFL fan, it made it really, really hard to watch um, football games, and, and I basically stopped. Um, the, he was there so early advocating, and you know, obviously Goodell at the end of the day, Friday, basically did a 180. Um, but, but that seemed like an obvious first person to reach out to and say, hey, like we still, we still have a lot of things to figure out, but I want to make sure the first million goes to the work that you're doing. And, and he was very gracious in accepting it and um, just a, a great human. I think history will, will, I mean, we just need to decide where the first Kaepernick statue should go. Um, I think without a doubt, history is going to look at him like another Jackie Robinson or you can list the names of, um, of, of heroes who transcended their sport. But um, I think the, the important part for me was I've been very blessed and I know, <laughs> maybe to a fault, um, I'm very confident in my abilities as an entrepreneur, as an investor, um, as a maker. And when I thought about what those dollars could do for a community that has clearly suffered for far too long and that I, with my power and my influence and my privilege, want to do something meaningful to, to start to show a, a change, to make, to make a better world for Olympia. Um, I wanted to be able to answer that question from her with the clearest conscience. And, and this was the way to do it. And I, look, I'm, I'm not, we're, we're obviously both a very fortunate couple, um, but I wanted to be able to say something and do something that had weight to it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I really want, I want all of this energy right now to continue. I really meant it when I said, do not stop. I, this is the time for this country to start, start to have that painful conversation and start to figure out the proper reparations for its original sin. And I really do believe it will make us a better, stronger country. But I, I, I wanted to put as much weight behind the gesture as I could mm. um, because I felt like I owed it to you and I owed it to her. Well, it's interesting because we live in a world where we live in a house, not a world. We live in a house where I am so one way with my feelings in the Bible and you're so another way with <laughs> your feelings about the country and about this. And, you know, I definitely respect how you feel and you really respect my, my, yes. my religion and what I'm trying to do with my religion. And I think that um, just off, off subject and on just a different topic, I think it's really cool that we... Um, are able <laughs> are able to respect each other and just yeah. always keep that keep that that love um so you know we definitely have different views on some things mm -hmm. but that's okay i just feel like um the closer i get with my relation to god and mm -hmm. then i just understand so many things clearly but then i see you doing so many amazing things that i'm so proud of you that you are doing mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just, it's crazy in this house. It's really interesting. We have a lot of fun. Um, I have one more question. Wait, I have to, I have to go there though, because I will say I have become a more spiritual person um, in this relationship. And, and I know it's something that's made me better as a person. And I think one of the areas, we were even talking about this last night, where, I mean, one of the things that really just broke me um, at some point in the last week was I was looking at Olympia at like, she's two and a half now, right? Yeah, dead of the year. Yeah, two and a half. And she is such a pure, just blank canvas. She only knows love. There, there is not an ounce of hate in her body. Like she can't even hate um, Mayor 
Oh my gosh. What's the bad guy in Paw Patrol? Humdinger. Mayor hum Humdinger. Mm -hmm. She can't even hate Mayor Humdinger when he's clearly a terrible mayor who isn't even running Foggy Bottom because he spends all of his time in um, the other place where the Paw Patrol is. Anyway, she doesn't have an ounce of hate in her body. And that's the, the crushing thing. And that is where, I that, that to me is, is proof of, of love and proof of God because every one of those souls that is born, every child is that same blank canvas of pure love. And when I hear God is love, that really only connected to me through her. Um, but it's having your perspective and your voice and those words around that help me connect those dots, but helps me see those things. And I, you know, you hear all your life about how hate is taught, hate is taught. And yeah, it is, it really is. And then to feel it in your home when you know that at some point, some point Olympia is going to have to have a talk with you, a talk with us, but especially a talk with you about how she's going to have to work that much harder, how she's going to have to deal with this much more. That pisses me off. And so this is the thing where, again, then the perspective comes in because then I'm sitting here and I'm like, if I'm this pissed off just now, like how long has, like how, how have you been able to endure your entire life? How have generations of black Americans been able to enjoy your entire life? Because if I'm just getting this mad right now, I mean, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to function. Yeah, it's hard. It, it's definitely not easy. Like I said from the beginning, it's, um, it's something that unfortunately has become a normal for us. Yeah. It's a normal to go in different places and feel unaccepted. It's just, it's just a normal. I entered a sport that was all white mm -hmm. and, um, <clears throat> definitely wasn't easy like looking back I was also very young and like I just adapted I wasn't there to to be like besties with anybody I was just there to play tennis and then that was it and then I would leave and but it really all just boiled down I think to my faith and realizing that all this is temporary and that what I believe and what the Bible teaches is that there's so much more um, waiting if we are obedient and mm -hmm. if we exercise faith and if we do what the Bible says. So I don't think I would be in this position. I think I would be very angry, very mm -hmm. spiteful, very mm -hmm. jealous mm -hmm. if I didn't have that spiritual background. Um, and because of all the things that I've been through, all the things that I go through, all the things that I see, um, it will be very hard, I have to say, because I've been through, because of what I, my career in the sport that I I chose. It's been a it's been a lot harder than the than a lot a lot of other sports, um, but I do believe that that's the only reason that I've been able to come through is because of mm -hmm. my belief in the Bible and my faith. Um, on that note, this has been really great. So this is Serena Saturdays. We do this every Saturday. We took last Saturday off because of everything that was going on in the world. We wanted to be respectful. Um, usually we talk fashion, we talk life, we talk boys, we talk all kinds of stuff. We talk a live boy here, which is cool. Um, so that's fun. We, um, we launched a really cool campaign on SerenaWilliams.com. You go on Serena Williams and you can get a free S pin. Um, we'll pay for shipping, we'll pay for everything. And what's really cool is we just want you to share your story. And what does your S mean? So my dress today, we it comes and has like a belt and it says strong, spectacular, smart. I can't read the rest because it's twisted, swag, um, sensitive. So anyway, we really just want you to tell your S story and what is that story? Um, so I just wanted to read just one S story that we got from someone. Um, from, let's see, Survivor. So, Denisha said, I have survived cancer and growing up in improvised Inglewood, California. I have survived the cards stacked against me and the odds were not in my favor. I am a survivor. So, thank you, Denisha, for sharing your S story. Please feel free to go on the handler at Serena or you can go on at Serena Williams too or you can go to serenawilliams.com, get a free S pen and share your S story because we want to hear about it usually on Serena Saturday. We plan to talk about it today, but we ran out of time with Alexis and we got to get to our kid because, mm. you know, she's two and she needs to make sure that we need to make sure she's not, you know, 
in the flour and throwing sugar and everything around. She right. tries so she hard really to does. bake and cook. You know, she, she still learns. She really does. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining me, Alexis. Thanks, thank you for giving me the exclusive yeah. of this crazy story that was just happening <laughs> all day yesterday. I feel really special about it. Um, thank you all for joining us, and we will see you next Saturday on Stern Saturday. Hey. I'm telling you, you're going to have your own talk show at the end of this. <laughs>